Good morning everyone, today we're checking out a brand new video from the Food Fitters about how this could be the only food you need that could save your life during a hurricane. And let's cook on in. How should you eat your fridge? No, that's not the setup for a joke. If your fridge isn't running, what yeah, should you eat joke. and in what order should you eat it all in to avoid as much spoilage as possible? Well, it all comes to- Whenever me and my family would be out of power, we just don't open the fridge at all. If you need something to eat, you need, uh, check the cabinets or get uh, some chips first. Plus, if you have to get anything out of the fridge, do it fast. Down to what foods you're choosing to stock up on no, if you're, you're expecting grabbing. to lose power. And let me tell you, you're probably choosing wrong. Oh yeah. Hello, Internet. We Welcome to Food Theory, the show that's always prepared. And thank goodness for that, because you may remember all the way back in the first episode of Food Theory on the Road that I said we'd be getting to Florida and working with a special guest that I've been looking forward to meeting for a long time. Well, Mother Nature thought I was talking about her, oh. and instead of our original collab that we had planned, we got hit with a hurricane. In all seriousness, Damn, though, don't worry. We'll still get to do the original episode. But with the uncertainty of how much damage the hurricane would do in our area, Area, we decided the responsible thing to do would be to reschedule for another time. And honestly, it makes it's sense. been so amazing seeing all of you leaving comments worried about my safety. It means so much to have such a great community. And in a time where stress was at an all-time high, all of Aww. you reaching out kept me sane. So thank you. As for the oh, original Sophie. episode, we love you. We would never want to see you harmed. So it's coming. So make sure you click the subscribe button so you can be there when it does. But in the meantime, no, 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 no. not gonna lie, it was a pretty stressful. I'm, I don't want to see that. I see. Oh my god, I just need to cut all this. Time. I had to scramble to find another topic to talk about and scramble to get all the food I needed to weather the storm. But when I got to the supermarket and I saw the empty shelves, I realized the theory Crap. was right in front of me the whole time. People were doing it all wrong. Not only were they reaching for the wrong things, but that would lead them to having the least optimal eating order <laughs> if and when the power. You also would grab a lot of microwavable foods, and guess what? No power, no microwave. Or went out. It got me thinking how and in what order should you eat the contents of your refrigerator if you lose power regardless of whether it's from a hurricane or a raccoon chewing on your power lines like the cartoonish villains they are well <laughs> to get there first we have to solve the problem that starts all the way back at the grocery store what you're buying to begin with is probably wrong now let's get a couple of things out of the Gotta way for this dry. we're going to be focusing on what should go in your refrigerator and freezer after all you can stock up on all things canned and be good for years we're not mm -hmm. doomsday prepping for the world of fallout here though just for the week or so you might be out of power. When you look at some of the most commonly bought items before a storm, milk and bread are usually among the top choices. Some even call them French toast warnings before storms because the milk, bread, and and eggs suddenly disappearing. But when you think about Oof. it, it doesn't really make any sense. All three of those are some of the first things to go bad if you don't have power. So mm -hmm. are people just making a bunch of French toast when natural disasters strike? Honestly, I don't know. <laughs> the answer might as well be yes, because the absolute lack of logic is something psychologists have even looked into. A working theory is that it dates back to the blizzard of 1978 in New England, where people were stuck inside for days without the fundamental ingredients. So they made oh, sure to never let that history That's repeat itself bad. and the word spread. Another theory suggests that it's a psychological coping mechanism, that by buying perishables, we subconsciously convince oh. ourselves the power will return before they go bad. So it's kind of sus if you ask me. And it still leads back to something not adding up. Since being stuck inside for days and presumably without power means yeah. that even if you had lined the walls of your house with cartons of milk and eggs, they'd most likely spoil before you could consume them. Obviously, this isn't to say that you can't use How those ingredients as building blocks for other things that can last longer than the sum of its parts, but you'd most likely have most of it go bad. Unless part of your storm party plans inexplicably involved a milk and egg chugathon. Look, I'm not oh. That's kind of gross. Yeah, I'm judging. So if the panic buyers are wrong about what they dive for in the grocery stores, what is right? Again, getting the things that know. have indefinite shelf lives is always good. We're talking your rice, beans, pastas, and don't forget the flour. But we want to stock up our fridges and freezers. And if you want to avoid having to deal with the moral debate of fighting a preteen over some milk, there are five things that usually go overlooked that are really everything you need. At the go top on. of that list, butter. Butter can last for months if stored properly. And before Ooh. you ask, 
desk. That's yeah, good. storing it in a dark fridge counts as properly. It's just one of those things that's really versatile. You can slather it on some toast, use it to cook if you have a gas stove, or if you're all electric, even make some no-bake desserts. Next up, Ooh, sorry to all you lactose clever. intolerant theorists out there, cheese. Not just any cheese though, specifically hard cheeses. See, hard cheeses like Gouda, cheddar, or Parmigiano Reggiano are low in moisture, <laughs> meaning so bacteria Italian. has a harder time growing in them than say cream cheese or mozzarella. They can last Good. for months Good. if they're unopened, but the big advantage is that even when you do open them, they can last for up to a month if you don't eat it all first. Ah, Third oh. item on the shopping list, fruits. This one is a double whammy because it's two particular fruits, apples and lemons. Apples have the longest oh. fridge life of most common fruits, lasting anywhere from three hmm. weeks to three months. They're full of nutrients, keep the doctor away, kinda, and are mostly <laughs> yeah, water, kinda. meaning they can help out with hydration. Lemons have vitamin C like apples, but also last for a long time in the fridge and do just fine at room temperature when your fridge inevitably warms back up. The last item that'll go in the fridge is a pretty obvious one, but plays yeah. the most important water. role, water. It's not a shocker and it is one of the items that goes first. So even though it's last on this list, it should be the first thing you go buy. Aside from Ooh. the obvious need Sorry, humans but have for water to do the whole being alive thing, water bottles keep your fridge cold when the power goes out. And bear with me here because we're about to get all scientific all right. in this fridge. Let's oh, fail. I'm so sorry for that. The reason is that they drastically increase the thermal mass inside the fridge. Basically, thermal mass is the ability of something to absorb and store energy. Water is phenomenal at that. In fact, it's one of the oh, best yeah. liquids, period. See, water has a high specific heat capacity, meaning it takes a lot of energy to heat it up or cool it down. So if you fill mm -hmm. your fridge with water and give it plenty of time to cool before your power goes out, when it does, it'll take a lot of energy for it to warm back up. Think about how long Very it takes useful. for a pot of water to finally boil over high heat. Now, think about how long it would take for it to warm up if it's cold and there's no heat source other than a tiny bit of room temperature air that leaks inside. So essentially, a, it increases the- That would take a very long time the total amount of energy it'll take for the entire fridge to warm up since so much cold is stored inside them. Increasing thermal mass is the overall goal here, which is why apples, lemons, and cheeses are on this list as well since they all have high thermal mass, meaning they all help in oh, keeping thanks. your fridge cool long after your power goes out and Keep gives it you cold. some wiggle room to buy your usual items as well, if you can find them. So we filled oh, our right. fridge to the brim with cheeses, water, fruits, and butter. Everything's cooled down as much as it needs to, and the power goes out. What next? How do you eat your fridge in the most efficient way? Especially because every Let's time you out. open your fridge, you lose some of that precious cold your high thermal mass foods have stored up. In fact, you lose around 30% of the cold air every time you open the door, meaning Crap. you're racing against the clock. The US Food and Drug Administration suggests keeping your fridge between 35 and 38 degrees Fahrenheit. And within that range, if the power goes out, they also say that things will stay cold for about four hours. But there's a little nuance there. Cold in this case means at or below 40 degrees Fahrenheit, since the type of bad bacteria that likes to grow on food tends to multiply Ugh. between temperatures of 40 and 140 degrees. After those four hours, you have some time before the food warms up and the threat of bacteria sets in. So the first time before you open your begins. fridge should be at the five hour mark. Oddly specific, but once the four hours of cold have gone, the harmful bacteria can get to dangerous levels after multiplying for about two hours. Meaning you'll want to bust into your quit. fridge a while before that to get rid of the things that won't last. Yet Yes, this does mean your eggs and milk. Let the chugathon commence. This also means any meat you made the mistake of buying and shredded cheese, or else they'll have more mold than la. I'm not touching that one. No. Oh, Ooh. moving on. You should get your fill here for the day. Hold and on. What was he about to say? means any meat you made the mistake of buying and shredded cheese. Or else they'll have more mold than la I'm not touching that one. No. Oh, moving on. You should get your fill here. I don't even know what he was going to say for the just day, and on. that should leave you with pretty much just the items on our original list left. Of those four, the next thing to go is butter. Once the fridge starts to heat up closer to room temperature, butter only has a few days before it can start going bad. Don't go chomping on the stick of butter, but it might be a good idea to start being generous with it on your toast. That leaves us with apples, <laughs> Slap lemons, on. and water. Not exactly three square meals, and we're only two days in, but this is where our secret ingredient kicks in. At the top of the episode, I mentioned you need to get five things. 
But in our fridge, oh, we yeah. only focused That's on right. four. That's because the fifth item should completely fill up your freezer, fish. See, while people are oh, scrambling for milk and gross. eggs, you should be dashing to the frozen aisle to stock up on fish. It's usually overlooked on lists of things to buy before storms. And at first glance, it makes sense because it's hard to cook any sort of protein if you don't have power. Except there's more than one way to cook a fish. By the time your diet has whittled down to butter and bread with a side of apple, your fish in the freezer will likely start to warm up and thaw. I mean, you could absolutely take out a couple of fillets and put them in the fridge to thaw <laughs> before you need to subsist solely on butter, but hey, you do you. In any case, fish is relatively unique as a protein because you don't need heat to cook it. All you need is the lemon that we've stuffed in the fridge. If you've ever had Wait, ceviche, what? you know what I'm talking about. It's raw fish that's been cooked with citrus. Like I painfully learned in the sour food episode with Josh, oh. lemons have a very <laughs> low pH level and the citric acid denatures the proteins in the fish a lot like how heat does. It gets firmer, more opaque, and gets rid of whatever germs okay. may have survived the freezing. I mentioned fish being unique in this because the proteins in beef, for example, are tougher and not as porous as those in fish. So the citric acid from the lemon would tenderize it, but it wouldn't fully denature the proteins enough to cook it. And yes, to those of you commenting huh. that it's not actually cooked, you're not wrong, but the protein denaturation in fish is similar to the effect that cooking it with heat has, which is why ceviche is a generally safe dish to have and is considered cooked. So it's there you have it. If fish, you're getting ready though. for a storm, don't bother with the milk and eggs. Make sure you stock up on water, apples, and butter. But most importantly, dash to the lemons and frozen fish so that you can outlast the outage by chowing down on some ceviche while everyone else is throwing out their rotten milk. But hey, that's that just a theory. A food theory. Bon appetit. I don't have much to say because I am not a fan of fish. I would rather eat lo lo lemon and apple for days on end to try to survive. Oh, Lord. That's going to be the end of today's video, and I hope you all enjoyed this. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more. Link to the original will be in the description below, and I'll see all of y'all next time when we flick back on. Till then, this is Fox, signing out. Peace.